So, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to the student track and the startup track. Uh, today, uh, my name is Lillian. Today, I will be leading the student track, and my colleague Vadim over there will lead the startup track. Uh, we will start with a short opening lecture by James Agnew. Uh, and after that, the startups can stay here. Uh, and the students can follow me and James uh, towards the students' table in the atrium. And for the students, uh, today we'll compete for this beautiful, uh, ugly, <laughs> unique Dev Days uh, Cup. But first, uh, I will invite James to uh, do the opening talk. Cool. Awesome. Oh, we have lots of people here now. So who, okay, I, who, who here is student and who's startup? Who's student in the room? Oh, mostly. And, uh, not <laughs> we, uh, who's startup then? Who's left? Okay, all right, we got a cool, a few. Awesome. Cool. Well, so this, I mean, this is our first year doing the startup track thing. It's going to be fun to see how that goes. I'm sure it'll be awesome. The student track we've done year after year, and honestly, it's my favorite part of Dev Days. It's always really cool to see what, uh, what all comes out of the student track. Um, good times for sure. I'm not going to talk for too long, uh, and this is not at all, I, I don't know, I think lecture is the wrong word. I, I, I'm, I'm the hype man, I guess, for, uh, for the student and startup track, so this is just a little warm-up. Um, like most of the content you guys are going to see here, we, uh, we in the FIRE community are all about open source and open content and free exchange of ideas and all that good stuff. So this, uh, you have the link to the slides, not that they're anything exciting, but I like to point out that we, uh, we Creative Commons everything we do. Um, a little bit of background. Okay, so we are at a tech conference, of course, talking about a pretty boring seeming subject, a bunch of APIs for healthcare. Uh, not boring at all, I don't think, but I don't know. Let's talk about APIs for a second, just in terms of background for what we're doing. A story. Back in 2006, um, Twitter, and I'm sure you guys all use Twitter. I'm personally terrible at it, but I think it's a neat platform. Um, Twitter put this API on top, of their, on top of their services. And of course, the idea there is people can write clients <laughs> that connect into the back-end systems of Twitter. And Twitter's idea of, with this, of course, was that people would come up with new Twitter clients and you know, new ways of interacting with their stuff on, their, on your phone. So if I wanted you know, weird ways of visualizing my feeds or whatever, I could get that on my phone. And Twitter put that out in the world and sort of figured, go to it, developers. And of course, developers started looking at that and went nuts with it. And I mean, some built the, the usual Twitter client apps that you would expect people would build. But the coolest thing about any of that was that people turned around and did all kinds of crazy things with that data that Twitter really were not expecting them to do. This is one example, and I mean, this is almost a cliche at this point. I'm sure a bunch of you guys have seen this before. But Twitter sort of, like a, some, some enterprising user looked at that API and realized, hey, the second there's an earthquake, people, like, what does anyone do when there's an earthquake? Well, I mean, they should get under something and hide under a desk, but of course what they do first is they tweet about it and then they hide under the desk. And what Twitter realized, or actually what some random developer realized, is that we could actually detect earthquakes faster by watching Twitter than we could by watching the, you know, by watching the seismographs that sit on the ground, because whoever was sitting right at the epicenter of that earthquake, sure as heck, they were tweeting about that first. Um, I mean, that's cool, right? So this is one unexpected use. A second one that's closer to, maybe closer to the health space we're all working in is this one. Um, somebody at the CDC, the Center for Disease Control in the US, realized that, I mean, again, human nature, the first thing when we do when we get sick, um, we don't go to a doctor, we tweet about that too, and I mean, I'm guilty of that too, it's Facebook for me, but, um, you know, people, the CDC realized that often before any epidemiologists were realizing anything by monitoring who was going to the doctor for what or anything, they could sort of in, they could figure out where the flu, where flu outbreaks were happening really hyper localized just by watching who was tweeting about being sick. 
Uh, and it, I mean, all of this proved to be extremely accurate. So two really sort of interesting examples of unexpected uses of APIs. Um, we here in the FIRE community are all about this stuff. So why are we all here today? We're all here for the FIRE standard, of course. Um, FIRE itself is, if you're not aware, a fairly new thing, actually, um, at least new in the scale of healthcare. I guess that's, uh, that's a relative term. Um, FIRE has existed since 2011, um, so we've been around for seven odd years, uh, which, I mean, in the age of slow-moving healthcare, I guess that seems like a lifetime, but it's not. It's, it's been around barely any time. And FIRE has become this just global community of people doing unexpected things with data APIs. When we set out to build FIRE, we were thinking, you know, just basic sort of get data in and out of EHRs. We've been trying to move data from health record system to health record system for decades and decades and decades. And we sort of figured, let's come up with a new modern approach for all of that. Um, it, I mean, really, we're having sort of that same story Twitter has, though. Every one of these conferences, people comes to us with unexpected uses, crazy things they're doing with APIs. Uh, I'm not going to go through every last example, and I suspect we're probably going to see a few through the startup and the, uh, the student track today and tomorrow, but... I mean, this is one little tiny example that I think is really neat. If you guys haven't seen the Apple Health Records app, and I actually don't think this exists here in Europe yet. I'm from Canada. It also doesn't exist in Canada. This is a US only thing for now. But I suspect we're going to see this start to, I mean, you guys will probably get it before we do in Canada, to be honest. Um, one way or the other. This, honestly, I think this is probably one of the biggest examples of healthcare interoperability, like a big big healthcare interoperability project going on in the world right now. The Health Records app is this great big distributed system where any sort of participating hospital in the US, and there's tons of them and more being added every day, allow people to sign in through their phone to their health system, download a copy of all of their data into their phone, and then consumers, like people with a phone, can walk around with a copy of any health data that they wanted to sync into it. Um, what are Apple going to do next with all this? Who knows? I'm sure they've got all kinds of crazy plans. There's a bunch of people behind this app kicking around this conference today. Uh, if you find one, I would totally recommend chatting with them about this stuff. It's really, really neat, actually. Uh, and I think one tiny little example of sort of a community effort that is leading to really neat, unexpected uses in healthcare data. Um, I mean, I think for the students and the startups, this also sort of presents an opportunity. This is an Apple-only thing, of course, and I suspect some lucky person is going to do this same thing for Android and, uh, and have a hit on their hands one of these days, and hopefully that'll be soon. I'm an Android user myself, so I would love for someone to do that. So, we're here to talk about Fire, of course. Uh, I'm not going to spend too much time talking about what Fire is, because I feel like if you've come here, you've probably already figured that stuff out, but... Just to sort of drive it home here, I mean, FIRE is four things I always describe it as. And the first two I think are obvious. Um, sure, you've already figured out that FIRE is a set of data models. The R in FIRE is resources, and resources is our word for these little data models to model patients and encounters and practitioners and observations and all the things that we would ever model in healthcare. And of course, FIRE is an API. That's, uh, that's why we're all here, is to build these APIs around healthcare. Uh, FIRE is that for sure. The two things that I think are a little bit less obvious, uh, and are, but are every bit as important as the first two, our first off fire is this amazing set of tools and services and servers that are out there. Um, on the tools side, I mean, there are just um, like there are open source projects all over the place for fire. It is, you know, and they're they're official. Like there are you know reference implementations of the standard in. I mean, there's a Java, there's a .NET, there's a C Sharp, there's a Swift iOS, there's Android libraries, there's Ruby libraries, there's JavaScript frameworks, there's, I mean, there's like eight JavaScript frameworks because that's how JavaScript works. There, whatever your platform is, there are libraries that will help, probably help you get where you're trying to go. There's also this inc ever increasing network of servers out there. That uh, Apple Health Kits or Health Records app I was talking about. 
the whole thing is powered by these APIs sitting on top of patient portals in the US. And every one of those things, like every one of these portals has APIs. And those APIs aren't just limited to that app. Ever increasingly, there are just this crazy ecosystem of apps springing up that are all sort of talking to these servers that are uh, being made available. So, I mean, really the dream in sort of developing healthcare apps for I don't know, I've been at this for 15 years, has always been that there would be APIs that people could innovate against. And I mean, all of a sudden in the last year, two years, three years, we're starting to see these things open up and go live in production. So super cool. Finally, and honestly, most important, FHIR is this global community of, of healthcare developers working together. Um, presumably, you guys were not around yesterday. This is probably your first day at this event. Um, I cannot stress enough how important an event like this is to sort of this global development community around healthcare apps. There are events like this that go on almost around the world these days. Um, with people sort of working together, trying to solve problems together, having sort of really interesting conversations about the nuts and bolts, the minutia of, of healthcare interoperability. It's hilarious that such a hyper-focused topic springs up community like this, but it really does. Um, what does that community look like? I love this map. This is taken off, uh, I'm sure a bunch of you guys recognize this as a Google Analytics map. This is taken off one of the developer documentation pages around Fire uh, and gives you a good sense of sort of where Fire is getting used. There's a bunch of obvious trends in here. Uh, I, love, I love looking at this. It's, I, I like maps. I'm a nerd like I'm sure a bunch of you guys are. And I, Drawn to maps intuitively, but I mean, so we got lots of use over in the US, a little bit up in Canada, of course, lots in Europe, no big surprise there. Um, there's some really other sort of interesting trends though. I mean, that great big circle right there, Hyderabad, India is, uh, I think there's a lot of offshore development there. So that's actually not hugely surprising either, but I mean, to me, the most interesting bit of all of this is I did this map a year ago, and then I did, this is actually, this is taken October of this year. So this is like a very recent map. And the biggest change between this and the same map I showed a year ago is that we're all of a sudden seeing these giant clusters in Asia, Southeast Asia, South America. So all these sort of places that are traditionally not plugged into the same sort of community of global developers are starting to plug into all the same things we are. Um, so those of you guys doing the startup thing, I mean, think about the opportunity here. Anything you guys are building that's sort of talking to fire APIs, I mean, look at the sort of network of available places where people are building those exact same APIs you could be plugging your innovations into. It's, it's really a really cool thing, actually. Um, and I always do need to point out, this specific page doesn't get access to a whole lot in Africa, only because it's, there's, this comes from Happy, an open source library that I maintain, and those guys are using a different platform. So don't take the entire gaping hole of Africa as meaning there's nothing going on there. It's just that the people who are working in that space and that continent are not accessing this website. So really, it's a pretty comprehensive thing. Um, these guys here, so this is this event, but sort of in a whole bunch of places, left to right. Uh, left is this exact same event happening in the US. Uh, this is a, a, an official HL7 Connectathon, um, and this is people sort of working together to build various things. Dev Days, this is Dev Days last year, uh, so this is exactly what we're at, and hopefully we'll get a picture of everyone here so we can use this on this slide next year. This is Hanoi. These same events happened in Hanoi. Uh, this is, that was January of this year. I think we did one of these things in Hanoi. And this guy here is uh, Colombo, Sri Lanka. So to give you a sense of a few places we're doing all of this. I mean, this, you know, hopefully drives home what a global event we're all sitting at. Um, yeah, so this is, I'm gonna close on this. This is, for any of you guys who haven't met Graham Grieve yet, he was the guy that sort of really started FIRE. Um, and, no, that's not even his slide, actually. This is not what I was thinking it was. Never mind that. You know what? I'm not going to talk about that. I'm going to close on this one. Um, health records are changing. Point here. I, we're, we're seeing really a, a great big change in the way we sort of approach healthcare records and, and EHR apps and all of that. I've been working in this space for you know, 16, 17 years now. And I mean, 
For most of that time, we've seen this sort of wave of just great big vendors who are sort of selling doctor software, which frankly is mostly around billing, if nothing else, and you know happens to deal with a bit of health records and all of that. Um, and I mean, I've worked in a bunch of hospitals, I've worked in a bunch of governments, and I mean, these great big EHR software things are interesting, but we're seeing this crazy change in the last couple of years, this sort of reorientation towards consumer empowerment in healthcare. And all of this is driven by the fact that, of course, every last one of us has this super powerful little computer sitting in our pockets all the time that's connected to the internet and all of that. That's neat, but I mean, we've got the, the biggest thing is we've got this crazy ecosystem of APIs springing up around it. And all of that is sort of converging to this idea that healthcare apps are totally changing the way we think about how we manage health records. Uh, this example is from a company in Toronto who sell a, or actually not even sell, these guys are doing research, but this is an app for managing um, COPD, like basically respiratory problems. And these guys sort of are developing this nice chat bot that people interact with to sort of figure out if they're having uh, asthma exacerbations or anything like that. I watched a bunch of the usability trials on this app, and I mean, it's fascinating stuff. Their, their, their patient population are oftentimes people in their 60s, and their 70s, and their 80s. A lot of the time, these people are patients who have actually literally never used a cell phone before. And I mean, amazingly, these guys are interacting with chatbots. And these guys are running a full-blown clinical trial, like a randomized control trial, just like you do on drugs with one of these apps. And they're showing real positive impact. I mean, they're actually demonstrating that people are living healthier lives, are avoiding COPD flare-ups and things like that using an app. So one simple example of the power of this stuff. I hope a bunch of you guys are going to accomplish something like this over the course of the next bit. That's that. Have a lot of fun today. I hope you guys uh, enjoy the event. All right, hello startups. Now that we've gotten rid of all the students, we're getting down to work. <laughs> so I'm Vadim Pertokin, I'm a member of a Firely team, I'm a Fire Consultant, and just like all the yellow shirts at the event, I'm here to help you out. If you guys have any questions during the conference, feel free to hit me up or any other yellow shirt and we'll make sure you're all good. Uh, first, I wanted to give acknowledgements to Conclusion IT, which are a Dutch IT company who are sponsoring the event. I've just put in the slide yesterday, and Sander, the person from Conclusion, got stuck in traffic this morning, so all that effort. So the startup track, as James mentioned, is running for the first year. It's something we're trying out. It's new, very, it's new for us as well. And we think that for you, it's an opportunity to like, validate and market your idea. You are in a conference full of health IT developers. You can talk to a lot of people here, get a lot of feedback on your ideas here. Uh, networking, as usual, the Fire community is great. You can talk to people here from Apple, like James mentioned, the people who build the HealthKit app, they're here. Uh, from Google Cloud, Google has some 20 people here. If you wanna do any cloud stuff, you can talk to them about it. Learn Fire, as usual, get implementing advice, and also attend Dev Days on a Budget. So the schedule today, uh, this morning, you feel free to work on your product, uh, ask us any questions that you're stuck with in regards to fire and anything else, or attend sessions. 
I've pointed out a couple of very good sessions that I can recommend that you should attend. One is building apps for EHR app stores. I saw this talk uh, last dev days. It was amazing, that's why I'm pointing it out. That lady over there in the back will be delivering it right after this. And the other one is fire testing and system certification by Richard Etema. Richard is the Mr. Testing in Fire. He has a tool called Touchstone, which can, which can test your client or server for conformance to the fire specification. So if you're building something new, Touchstone is very good, and I really recommend seeing his talk. He knows everything about testing. After this presentation, you can either go attend the sessions or you can go um, work on your product or work on your pitch. The next important time today that you need to, bo not to know about is 3.45, that's when the five minute pitches will start. We will judge your pitches on how FIRE enables your concept to work, uh, how innovative your idea is, you guys are startups after all, uh, what business value your product offers. For you to survive, you need to have good business value, right? And as well as the pitch quality, because you are startups. This is about pitches. This is about selling your ideas fast. So the schedule is 3.45. That's when we start. We will announce the winners an hour after that. And the price is 2,500 euros. You'll get a nice big check. I've seen it in the storage room. So that's it. Good luck. Have fun. And uh, enjoy dev days. <laughs> and is everybody super clear? Any confusion? Any stupid questions? Yeah. Yep. Now or whenever you find me today, you can come and talk to me. Yeah, after you pitch your product, we will have time with, uh, for like two to three questions for the judges to ask you questions. Me, I begin in the back, and then two more people will be judges. Up to you, feel free. Whatever, whatever you think will satisfy. Whatever will sell, yes. Plug in your app and go, yes. Any other questions? Everybody's feeling confident? <laughs> All right, awesome. Thank you, guys. Enjoy.